Uh, thank you, Ray. Sure. All right, we're we're recording. We're come to order. Let's. Uh, what do we got going, guys? Any change of agenda needed? Hearing none, Bruce. What do you got for us? Um, okay, I I got on the call with the secretary today, and plus there's some local things that I wanted to share with everybody. Um, one of the things is that um, sorry. We, uh, I, I did get approval for the waiver of the days that we asked for in March. If you recall, we closed on the 16th, 17th, and 18th, which was not something that all the school districts did in March that I'm talking about. Uh, we closed after the weekend and never reopened, and many of the schools went back for the next three days. So I had to ask for those approval days, and I received them yesterday. Um, I've kind of gotten feedback that there's concern that we could be asking for too many days. So I think what I'm saying to you is that instruction will end on the 12th for all the districts. Um, and that includes Tunbridge. I'm going to try to get this, the secretary to just waive that one day that they had a heating problem, um, which I think was the 5th of November. Uh, where they had a heating problem. Um, I'm going to try to get that done, but it looks like we can end instruction on the 12th, and that would be, um, you know, 172 days instead of 175. Right. Um, and that would allow them, uh, the district, to have a couple PD days at the end. So, uh, as far as, uh, Rochester and Stockbridge go, they would Amy, be to do 11. Excuse me, Bruce. Amy had a question. As, yes, are we? Is, what about Rochester and Stockbridge? I thought that we had gone an extra day earlier. Uh, yeah, the town meeting day. I just said that when you had your hand up, that ah. they would be ending on the 11th instead of the 12th. The 11th. So, yeah. Okay. So I've I've got to do the detail, and I don't think I'll have any problems with the one day for Tunbridge. Um, the the problem is they waived those days, the three days, because it was related to COVID, and the Tunbridge day isn't. So I'm just going to have to ask uh, the secretary uh, myself and and see if they'll just do that. Um, I don't think it'll be a problem, but um, I'm going to do it uh, tomorrow um, with them. But I wanted to get the other days approved before I went back and got this one approved. So I haven't told the principal this yet. I will tell them tomorrow that I did get approval. So you guys are hearing it here first. Um, as you know, all of you know, I think you know that uh, Jamie's made a decision that we're going to have a summer program. Um, I think the plan was from nine to three. Um, but I don't know all the details because I haven't been on those conversations. Um, and there will be a food service done the way we've done it in the past, which is making them in one kitchen and delivering out to the site's curbside, I believe. But again, I haven't been involved in that as well. Um, they're pretty confident with the 21C money that we may be able to pay for everything uh, without a whole lot of uh, extra money. and uh, But I don't know the details. So that would probably be a Tara and uh, Tara question and, and a Jamie question. Um, I, I, I haven't been involved at that uh, at this point. Any questions on any of that? Uh, Tara, I think, is on the line, so she could answer anything. Are you there, Tara, somewhere? Yeah, yeah I'm here. Uh, anything to add to what I said? I know Jamie's not on, so if you got anything. Oh, I wasn't listening, Bruce. I'm dealing with my kids. What did you say? Well, I was just going to say that I'm pretty confident that the 21C money will pay for the food this summer. Yes, it's going to continue to go through the One Planet program like it always has. There's no change in programming there. Okay. All right. Uh, and the times on that was uh, nine to three, I think, Tara, for the program? Yes. Okay. 
All right. So let me go down through what the. Sorry, uh, excuse me, Bruce. This is Don. I just had another question about those waivers. So does that mean you're not going to be asking for those professional days? I'm not going to be asking for the snow days uh, because they, I could, if you want me to continue to do that. I'm just afraid that if I do that, we're going to go down below 170 days. Um, and I, when I call tomorrow, I'll, I'll ask and see if, if they're, likely to approve uh more days and snow days because that's what you guys wanted me to do yeah I, I get a sense that they may not be because we're being a little greedy okay uh, you know that would be that would be um seven days for tumbridge and six days for everybody else um and that would take us you know down below well, 170 days. we can't go below the state state ceiling right no, we, well, they are allowing schools to do it, but that oh. far below is is the issue, and they're oh. doing it for COVID related right. issues. Yeah. Okay. Um, so, you know, this isn't the snow days really weren't COVID related. Although I do know that a couple of the districts have had snow days waived, so I will ask again. There's a they do it. I can do it online now, so it's okay. Cool. Um, and. Uh, I think there's been so many requests. Um, I will, I'll probably call there and talk to the people. It's Emily Simmons that gave me the, uh, the information. Find out if she, if she thinks it's likely we're gonna be able to get these approved because I know they meet as a committee to do it. So, um, Thank you. anybody else? Go ahead. Yeah, I just uh, wanted to caution, um, you know, teachers at this time are trying to figure out wrapping up the end of the year projects and in the last days to get you know these reports and the last stuff together with the kids and um you know i don't know what day they were planning on but i want us to just be cognizant of the fact that if we're we're trying to help them by reduce their amount of days they might be already planning on needing those days to finish up these projects with the kids on um, you know just be cognizant of that no, I, was I hear you, Amy, but I, I've heard nothing but people want just this thing to end. Uh, they're really itchy. And, and I'm not talking about teacher days here. I'm talking about kid days. Uh, they still have to no, I just know that there's a, I know at the end of the year, there's a lot of projects that are being fi finished up that, um, you know, we need to be cautious, yeah. conscious of that. We're only talking next Friday. Anyway, I know. We're taking you know. three more days away. Uh, when they, they thought that they had the whole week to, to finish up. Many of, the, many of the principals have said, let's just call it Friday the 12th and right. let it be. So I'm going to tell them, as far as I know right now, it's the 12th. Mm -hmm. um, I will ask about the others. I feel like I have to ask about the others because I discussed that a week ago with all of you. And uh, if you're telling me that you don't think that's necessary at this point, well, then I'll change direction. But um, it took so long for them to approve the uh, the three March days that we were out. Um, I asked twice, and uh, it just, I don't know why, but it just took forever to get them to approve it. And I finally had to call, uh, you know, and they told me. Okay. I think for our district next Friday is fine. If, instead of, I think it's fine. Well, how we're do the, how the rest of you feel? Until the 11th, and I mean, I think that's when we're winding everything up anyway. Mm -hmm. I think you I, can't beat a dead horse, or it makes no reason to, and this is over, you know? <laughs> yeah, I know. I know. I know. I'm telling you, it's been quite a year. Uh, quite a year. Anybody else? I'm happy want to, to go. With I'm happy to go with what the crowd does, but I think we'd be fine enough. But if we just left it at Friday, I, mm -hmm. but I don't have a a real preference either way. But I I think our graduations on Thursday and Friday for Tunbridge and Chelsea, so we're not finishing mm -hmm. up until the end of the week anyway. Well, in a normal year, this would be a lot of field trips and outside yeah. activities and things like that anyway. So. Uh, uh, okay, thank you. Uh, let me go on with the stuff that the secretary talked about today. Uh, it looks like there'll be an announcement tomorrow about opening restaurants for inside 
eating and uh, service. It won't be outside any longer. That's what they're trying to do. And that announcement should come from the governor tomorrow. Uh, we got a little promo uh, about it today. Um, uh, they also said that the rule uh, that was put out there at the beginning of this COVID thing about keeping your employees employed will end. It will not be renewed after uh, June 30th. So it will be back for districts and SUs to decide and boards to decide uh, layoffs or whatever they're gonna do uh, and according to their local agreements. Uh, and that will not be renewed after July 1 or June 30th, which was interesting to hear that. Um, also, um, they were a lot of the uh, special schools that special ed kids get sent to, um, like the new school in, in uh, uh, Montpelier and, and uh, some of the other places have wanted to uh, continue to be paid even though they were not delivering services. And they were pressuring the AOE to basically continue to pay payroll because uh, they needed to hold on to their staff. Uh, originally, the secretary said that, that he was talking about uh, doing that uh, and paying uh, or asking school districts to pay for special ed kids, but they have, they have no desire to do that. So in other words, they're not gonna pay for services that aren't delivered is what I'm trying to tell you in a roundabout way. Uh, they are not gonna pay uh, reimbursement for things that don't happen. Uh, so, uh, and that's across the board, there will be no changes to it. And, uh, and that's been really, really a problem on the minds of a lot of the special ed directors around the state. Um, they're not, you know, these kids aren't getting services because they're home. And, but um, some of the, uh, I, I think the prime offender or the prime people that were pushing it was Washington County Mental Health. Uh, they really, they have a large uh, um, number of employees and, uh, Many of those people uh, haven't been able to service, uh, especially in the areas of mental health, uh, people that aren't, you know, face to face with them. So uh, that he said, we're not going to pursue that anymore. That's a moot point now. And we're not going to be paying for services that are not being delivered. Um, I told, talked to you a couple of weeks ago about driver's ed and about there was a, um, initiative uh, not to have to have the kids do the six hours for driver's ed. And there was a huge lobby by the driver's ed teachers around the state to not let that happen. In other words, they need the road time. Um, and it looks like things have kind of shifted in, in uh, Melpillier around this issue. Uh, that they're not going to be pursuing the waiver of the six hours any longer. They're going to they're going to keep that. They were really worried about backlogs in in lines of kids that you know can't get uh, the road time done. The other issue around this is um, if, if they only have one student in a car with a teacher, it becomes a huge liability issue. Usually they have two, one in the back. One, you know, one driving and the driver's ed teacher in the shotgun seat, I guess you would say. Um, so there was some concern about having that third person in the car and how that might affect uh, COVID or fear around COVID. Um, they're not going to, th there is a serious uh, liability uh, risk with, having, with, with only having two people in the car, one being the driver's ed teacher and one being the driver. So I think they've pulled back on that and they are not gonna pursue the waiver of the six hours and they are going to try to accommodate having the, the third person in the car. They don't, you know, that that's a real struggle. Several of the superintendents are uh, mentioned today, the secretary, that they're really uncomfortable with it, it closes a safety issue or a 
health safety issue, but it opens a liability and, um, you know, liability for the districts uh, in having some kind of an issue, you know, lawsuits with that. Um, so they're going to pull back on trying to get the, the road time waived and allow it to stay in place. Uh, and they're looking at uh, the idea of a re resumption of uh, three people in the car again um, soon. Uh, the other thing I'll tell you, this is coming from the secretary, not coming from me. Um, he was on a call this morning with all the other uh, New England uh, state school officers, which is all the secretaries and commissioners from the New England states. And I don't know whether this was just bragging or whether it was just what it was. Um, but he feels like Vermont's about a month ahead of some of the other districts as far or some of the other states in New England about making decisions. We haven't had the huge uh, number of cases that the other the other states have had. And that he, he says just the line of questioning um, was, was uh, at a place where he felt he, he was a month ago and not where we currently are. Um, so, uh, and that, you know, like I said, that could be just uh, us patting ourselves on the back about how well it's gone. But if you consider even New Hampshire, I know they have a lot more cases uh, than we've had in Vermont. So, um, so that's, that's on kind of on a side note. Um, the, there really hasn't been any change in the ESSER funds, uh, which are the, uh, $30 million. Um, we believe, he believes that the, uh, that seems to be heating up a little bit as it affects the ED fund. Uh, we've had some fears that that those monies wouldn't get to the districts that they'd stay in Malpelier and put back into the ed fund. But, um, and that's the way it's, it's going to come to the districts. They can keep 10%, but there are more politicians in Mount Pillar talking about filling the holes for next year in the, uh, uh, ed fund and how we might be able to manipulate the money. I said, and so he, somebody asked him today, you know, how would they do that? Well, you wouldn't, you just wouldn't ever receive, your entitlement, instead of giving it to you and then asking for it back, they just never give it to you. <laughs> so um, I don't know where that stands and probably that'll be a, a battle that'll go on for a while. We expect to see that S, uh, ESSER, um, the ESSER funds uh, July 1, um, and they have about a year shelf life. They've gotta be spent. Um, Everything, all the efforts of the AOE and the governor's office, legislature is all um, about opening up the economy right now. Uh, and they've also, they've got a round table that takes place on every Friday. It's been uh, the school district uh, or the, the SU's uh, representatives, the Department of Health, the Secretary of Education, um, and the governor's office are all uh, working uh, with other leaders trying to figure out how they can uh, start to open the economy. Um, and those happen every Friday. Uh, the, my group, the uh, superintendent's group has sent um, a communication uh, to that meeting with uh, the things that we're concerned about that we think there are solutions for um, all the superintendents in the state had a chance to edit the document and it went out about three or four days ago. Um, very comprehensive things on there that I never even thought of, but I did add some comments myself. Uh, but, um, you know, we all got a chance to edit it before it went out. Uh, a uh, couple things more. Uh, it looks like they've given up their fight to, I told you before that they were worried about the equitable outlay of the mo money, the ESSER money, B 
because it, uh, a good portion of it was going to go to independent schools and some of the public sector people, uh, public school sector people were, um, didn't like that, were worried about that. And, uh, um, and so they were pushing back on it, but it looks like uh, the feds are not going to budge. So they're not, they've probably given that up now. Um, also, I mentioned uh, the last time, um, maybe it wasn't here, but uh, maybe it was on my principal's call, that uh, the state is going to be uh, taking the lead on getting, uh, accumulating quantities of PPE, uh, the personal protection, uh, uh, masks, gloves, uh, thermometers, um, shields, and all those kinds of things. Uh, so now he did say today that we were going to have to supplement it. It was They weren't going to do everything, but uh, they were going to do some group buys so they were able to have the, the quantities available for us, um, but that we shouldn't just rest on that, that we should still purchase some of our own stuff because they just don't, there's an awful lot of need and they don't know whether they can reach it. And it's, it's not by the um, the AOE. It's this is uh, the um, the governor's office that's going to uh, work on this. The actual state government is going to do it, not just one wing of it. So I'm sure they're buying for other agencies as well. So uh, I'm running out of things. Um, pretty much that was it. Uh, there were a lot of questions about things that just aren't ready to be answered. Uh, they, they are very optimistic that we're going to open next year right now. Uh, and that's what they're pushing for. They don't, uh, he was more confident about that today than I've ever seen him be. Um, and so that must be the feeling in Malpelier. And I think it's has a lot to do with the fact that the numbers of tests have gone down, the numbers of cases have gone down, the numbers of deaths have gone down significantly. And uh, they also talked about a strategy if there was an outbreak in a place and it's called boxing in. You might hear that term. Uh, there was an outbreak in Winooski uh, not too long ago and they used that strategy. They did uh, the tracing that they do. They try to trace back to find out who's been in contact with you. Um, and that's part of, of what uh, they'll do in any cases where there seem to be uh, an outbreak of COVID. Um, they're going to, they'll do this uh, uh, boxing in type of thing. Basically, it's closing, closing down uh, everybody around you so that they can figure out where this came from and who, who's been in contact with it. So, so if you hear about boxing, you'll know that that's what it means because it's the first time I heard about it today. So does anybody have any questions? I may have missed something. I don't know, but uh, tried to take good notes. So there was a lot less information today than I've gotten at other times. Uh, and I think that's a sign of things are looking up. At least we're learning to live with it. Not, you know, we don't have all the answers, but we're learning to live with it. Bruce, this, yeah. this is Lisa McCrory. Um, yeah, Lisa. I got a bit late, but I was, so you might have said this, but what about the, the day camps? Um, yeah. Some, um, are those taking place? And if so, how? Yeah, I, uh, I turned this decision over to Jamie. Uh, and I also turned the schools, uh, the food service, because it all happens after I'm gone, uh, after June 30th. Uh, and he made the decision, I believe, to have a limited uh, uh, one planet camp this summer, 25, no more than 25 kids at a site, uh, limited hours, uh, nine to three, I believe is what it is. Food service will be delivered through the, those summer programs like it's been in the past. Um, but, but Lisa, I don't have huge details on this because I haven't been a part of the conversations. I'm trying to, little by little, give it to him and and uh, and control the things that I still have to do, but 
you know, let him do what will be his watch. So that's what I know. Um, and I confirmed some of that with Tara, um, a little while ago. Um, that's what I know. Many, many, many of the districts around the state are not running summer programs. Some of them are though. And, uh, um, the secretary encouraged it today. I was surprised, uh, but he did. And, uh, so when would we hear about how those are going to be run? Like, what are the students, you know, just the layout and logistics. I've been having parents asking me what we're doing in the Rudd um, district. And I'd love to be able to send them somewhere or give them an answer. Uh, Lisa? Yeah. This is Tara. I know in some of the other districts, the One Planet directors have already reached out to the families and also received notification from the principals that what the plans were for the summer program what I do know is it's nine to three Monday through Friday or Monday through Thursday sorry no programming on Friday mm -hmm. and that kids and parents need to wait in line to go in in the morning and they're going to be doing staggering entrances so they'll be doing health checks so parents have to wait for the kiddos to pass the health checks before they can leave their kiddos there. And then the same thing at pickup, it'll be staggered pickup times. Wow. And then the goal ultimately is to provide the most outside time that they can. That's what I know so far. And if somebody wanted to, who would somebody call um, if they wanted? Because I was talking to a parent who's got kids who theory would have heard about this. I just talked to her two days ago and she was not knowledgeable about this so one plan it's not reaching everybody so how how can people find out more i would say that uh, the best thing to do is uh is email carrie mcdonald um or bill bunsen your both of them have uh su uh emails uh okay. and they can be reached and uh and go right to the horse's mouth those are the two people that will be running it so if so you do that, then maybe Jamie uh, would be the other person. Okay. So their contact information, since they have W, they have yep. Supervisory Union emails, would be on the WRVSU website? Yeah, you could just type in B, or um, I don't know, Tara, does he go by William or B, Bill, uh, Bonsignor? Okay. I'm sure my-, my Yeah, it'll uh, pop up. I'm sure it'll pop up. And Carrie Mc McDonald. Okay. Uh, is the other one. Uh, they'll be able to help help you or, uh, or send you to whatever director is going to be in charge for the site you're questioning about. He goes, by, he goes by Bill. He goes okay. by Bill. So it's B. Bonsignor. Oh, Ray just put it up in the he comments. Put it up in the chat. So uh, great. That, Thanks. That'll get it. Um, this is a, a little bit of a rehearsal for the fall. <laughs> The, the summer program, you know, we're going to, you know, it'll be, it'll be different, but it, you know, the fact that we're going to have kids back in buildings again um, is a little bit of a step in the right, in that direction. So. Yeah, we can learn from it. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, there's a bunch of stuff in the chat now that Ray put in there that you can go to in order to be able to get these questions answered. Again, I, I wish I could help you better, but I'm not involved in this one. So, um, I don't have anything else unless people have questions. Bruce, before you go on, sorry. It does look like uh, they have updated that very recently. Uh, it says June 2nd or June 1st, the One Planet Summer website. Okay. Thanks hey, a lot. Any questions on anything? I guess I wonder uh, if all of you still value this time. I'll keep doing it as long as you know we need to. I really kind of thought that the best thing I could do was to try to provide as much information for boards uh, so that they could make decisions. And, and so that's what I've tried to do. I think it's a really good update if you don't mind continuing to do it. I'll be happy it's to not, continue. Yeah. 
It's nice to know what's going on. We don't always hear everything. Anybody else want to give me feedback? Agreed. I think the weekly update of just the most great is very important. Yeah, well, sooner or later, probably Jamie needs to be me. <laughs> well, I, and I agree with that, too. At some point, we do need to start transitioning over because, uh, you know, the conversation tonight had to do with going forward, and we are look, we're looking for those answers as well. So, Well, I'm not having my hands involved in anything up to June 30th. I don't, mean, I don't mean to say that like I don't want to. It's just a kind of, I think it's his turn. So. Passing of the torch. Passing yeah. of the torch. Absolutely. But I would make it clear, if, if it hasn't been made clear, that we very much appreciate these updates. I think especially once camp kicks in, I will be really curious to know how that's going on a week-by-week -week basis. Um, I'm personally yeah. a little bit nervous by it, but I um, just want to make sure. Uh, you know, the thing in Winooski, there were 36 cases today, 34 of yeah. them in Winooski. So, you know, like in a, so it doesn't take long for an outbreak to kind of to develop and so if we're going to experiment with this this summer i would just i would just want to keep a very close eye on it yes, yes. i i agree some good feedback i think it'll help help us go forward into the school year and and, and know where our limitations are and uh, i think it's very important anybody else questions anything else that's on your mind that i might be able to deal with uh, the, I'd like to ask the negotiating team to stay on. Uh, That's Dina. what I was going to ask. Are we just staying on, or do we need to get on to another meeting? Well, Ray, do we need to get on to a different site, or can we stay on this one? Uh, this was the only one meeting. Okay. Remember, there's other things on the agenda. Tonight? Oh, yeah. Well, all right, Tara. Well, this isn't a full uh, board meeting, so there shouldn't be things to vote on on the agenda. This is just a. I put things to vote on, and I told everybody last week that I was. So if you don't have a quorum, then I need you to schedule another meeting to approve the audit RFP and the fuel oil and propane RFPs. They're on the agenda. I don't have. I don't think we. I don't think we have a quorum. We don't have. Well, maybe we do. Do we, Don? Fifteen on the call, but some of them are Ray and Sarah and myself. Right. I. We have the board. Do we have the executive board? If we have the executive board, that constitutes a quorum for working. We have a quorum of the executive board. Okay. And we have Kathy Lee. Yeah. All Lisa. the White River Union District um, representatives are here. Okay. okay. There's two from our district. Okay. Is Carl here? Okay, Tara, do you no, want to? I, mean, I think you're the only one from your board. Right. So I, I am not the uh, on the executive board. So do I get there by default or? Uh... No, yeah, you are. <laughs> no, I know. That's what I thought. I don't know. You, you yeah. take it from here. Can I, I, can I just ask something? Can I ask one thing since this is for the future um, and it's the auditors? Should that something be something Jamie's involved in? Are you asking me? I don't know how I'm much I'm asking in are. general how people feel. I mean, I, I'm I, not gonna... I thought that Jamie had done some research and had information, maybe he's communicating that through Tara, um, but about the auditors and the firms that are available to us. Jamie did not communicate that with me and I already sent out my RFP back in May and got my bids Yesterday. Okay. And I had emailed this to all the boards earlier today. Right. It's very challenging for me to have an opportunity to look thoroughly at something when I am at work and I receive it at three o'clock in the afternoon. So I appreciate that it came earlier today, um, but I worked up until about 15 minutes before I came to this meeting. Well, let's review it now. Tara, can you uh, can you review it for us? But I would also like to know if we have Jamie's input on it since it's in the future. I've had no communication with Jamie about the audit RFP. It was my understanding it was sent out to people that supplied audits for our school systems. Doesn't That's hurt. Right, doesn't hurt to listen to what the response is. 
Okay. Unless other people really don't want to do it. I, I would be interested in Tara's rundown. I took a very quick look. I was also working most of the day, so I didn't take more than a cursory glance. Sharing my screen, let me know if you can see it. I do feel that the auditors is a very important thing as we, our experience that we've had this year. Agreed. I can't see it, Tara. I can. Yeah. I can. Um, I could if I had my glasses on. <laughs> Put them on. I got it. I got it. But I got it. Thank because you. Because I could make it. <laughs> I'm surprised at the number of people that offered the services. The last time we did this, there was only two, I believe. Yeah, I communicated with a couple other business managers to get some feedback on who I could reach out to so that we had a better pooling. Okay. So as you can see, I sent the audit RFP via email on May 19th with a request to have the bids back to me by June 3rd for opening. I opened them yesterday at one o'clock. Eight firms were sent the packets via email. Two of them came back with a declination. Um, JMM and Associates declined due to they don't conduct municipal audits. Um, Sullivan and Powers declined due to their workload. And I did not receive a bid from Kittle, Brannigan, and Sargent, Father Gail, Siegel, and Valley, and Quadric and Sanderson. And Tyler Sim St. Cyr did not also submit a bid. So the two bids that I received were from RHR Smith and Company and AM Peich and Company. And it was a three year RFP request for the current fiscal year, next year, and then the following year thereafter. And who do we currently use? We use RHR, RHR Smith. And Company. So that, that AM Peich bid that. We have, um, through working through where I work, um, a lot of my clients use them and they say they're phenomenal. I use them and they certainly are very responsive, but that's for just for personal, I'm not yeah, sure. I don't know about school stuff, but I do know for my customers, my co business yeah. customers really like them. <clears throat> Tara, what are your thoughts about it? I have concerns about changing auditors, as I've expressed to you all before. I understand the frustrations that have occurred on all the levels across the supervisory union with the FY19 audits. And the reason I have concerns are the following. Hey, wait a minute, hold it, hold it. Shouldn't we go into non-public for this? Um, really the comment could be, uh, could hurt their business. Well, if there is our motion. I mean, what did you say, Don? Is there a motion to do an executive session? No. Uh, I'll second. And the reason, what would be the reason, Bruce? Um, basically, it could be comments uh, that could, uh, I, I, I'm struggling with the language. It's personnel, I isn't it? And I mean, it's, it's people we employ. Yeah, it's, it's our, one of our contractors. And if there are, well, it could hurt their business. So, okay. Well, if, if, if it falls into that category, that, that's appropriate then. Mm -hmm. So that's been moved and seconded to go into executive session to discuss personnel matters. All in favor say aye. 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 Aye, any, any opposed? All right, let's go into executive. Do you also so, want to table the fuel RFP too for not until next week then? Let's do that. We'll get Jamie, we'll get Jamie involved in both those topics this week. I have to ask the company if they can hold the bids out that long. For another week? Well, yeah. it's pretty hard to do with fuel oil companies. That's the problem. If fuel oil goes up, they're not going to retract their bids. <laughs> what do folks desires? Do you want to look at the fuel? I can't hear you. Can they've, got to, they've got to expect that we're going to have board meetings and 
I, I feel like fuel oil is much more cut and dried than I, I, I don't have any concerns about the, the purveyors of fuel oil we've been getting the way that I did about the, the audit process. I don't feel like it's the same sort of decision. True. Should we have a motion to accept the, the whichever bid you want us to accept? <laughs> Tara, would you explain the fuel oil process, please? The bids. Yes, I'll share my screen again so you can see it. Do we need to go into a negative, another executive session? No, I don't think so. Okay. I believe so for this. All right. Let me know when you can see it. Can't. I can see it, but can you make it bigger? Okay. So I approached the company that used to be used by our supervisory union, Competitive Energy Services. And this was also the company that was recommended by Jamie's current business manager because this is who he uses for all of his fuel services for both his district and the town. So we provided the information of our schools, um, what they had for tanks and what they had for usage. Current providers are primarily Dead River for fuel oil and Irving for the propane. And our propane usage is much lower because that's primarily for the kitchens and the stoves and, and the whatnots where the fuel oils for our heating systems. So the first bid that we received from Dead River, so this is a revised bid, was if the two of our buildings that have the 10,000 gallon tanks could take deliveries from tanker trucks, but the two buildings apparently don't have the ability to take tanker trucks. So that changed the pricing that they originally had given us. So Dead River came in at the $1.45, Champlain Valley is $1.4587. Irving was $1.4610. And Rhymes is $1.699. And that's for the year price. And then on the propane side of things, the two vendors that provided proposals was Rhymes and Irving. Rhymes is at $1.249 and Irving is $1.49.6. So one of the things that the gentleman from competitive had advised me of when it comes to propane, apparently gas companies own the tanks. So if you were to move companies, then they have to go in, the current company has to take out the tanks and new company has to go in and put in new tanks. So oftentimes when it comes to propane, there are as many individual companies that are willing to provide the propane bids if you don't have a substantial quantity of usages. So that was why we only got the two bids in his opinion as to the four bids that we got for the fuel oil. Tara? Irving also did um, reach out to him with a, a caveat that because they are our current supplier, that they would honor the lowest bid. Huh? Okay. Tara, this is Amy. Just to clarify, this is uh, SU wide for all of our schools, or is this? Yes, this would be buying in bulk so that we get yes, a better yes. rate for all of our schools. For all ten of our buildings, or seven, or eight of our buildings. Sorry, eight. Right, and I do believe some of our buildings do own their own uh, propane tanks, so. Well, I understand what you're saying, but that would be something to look into as to which buildings own and don't. Well, in my house, I, I mean, I know I realize I'm residential as opposed to commercial, but um, I, that's what I thought too, you know, because I have a big propane tank that's buried and I, you know, I, I switched companies and they just contacted the other company and they didn't come and dig anything else. They just took ownership of it, you know, wasn't the big deal. Now, it may very well be different for, uh, you know, public thing, but. Um, and, and I think it probably would depend on your tank size, Sarah, given that yours is buried. Mine are above ground tanks. And when okay. we switched, they came and took their tanks away. Oh, okay. And brought new yeah. ones. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Tara, what do you suggest? 
My recommendation would be to go with Dead River and to continue through with Irving. And per bid requirements and bid statute, you're allowed to pick one of the lowest three bidders. So moved. Yeah, I'll second. That was not a motion, Sarah. <laughs> I don't have the authority to move. <laughs> or make yeah, but I can use your words, can I? <laughs> I would make a motion to uh, move forward with the business manager's recommendation for a uh, propane fuel service vendor. That was Stacy Peters made the that motion. Was. Second. And gas too, right? Or and oil. And and oil, yes, propane and oil. Is there a I second it. Sarah seconded it. Okay. Moved and seconded to go with the business manager's recommendation on bulk purchasing for propane and furnace fuel. All in favor say aye. 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 Don says hi. It's passed. Go ahead. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you, folks. Thank you, Tara. Thank Anything you else? Anything else tonight for the open session? Move to adjourn. Was that Sarah? Yep. I'll second. Kathy seconded. Moved and seconded to adjourn this meeting. Would the, would the uh, contract committee please stay on the line? Okay. Bye. Right. Bye. All right. Go ahead. Let's call the meeting to order for the negotiations committee. Is there a motion to go into executive session to discuss contract and language? I'll make a motion to go into executive session to discuss contract and language. Kathy, and is there a second? I'll second. Stacy seconded. All in favor say aye. Let's go. Aye. 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 Everybody's on mute, so we're in executive.